Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us for today's Indusoft Web Studio um, webinar. Uh, my name is Scott Cortier, I'm Senior Technical Sales with Indusoft, and today our special co-host, Mr. Matthew Knight from EMR Associates, uh, will be uh, presenting on a template application that he has. Um, you'll see that. And uh, before we get uh, get to his part of the presentation, I'm going to talk a bit about custom projects versus template versus configuring projects. Um, kind of neat tools that we have to do that. Uh, and IndieSoft Web Studio is just well suited for that. And so I'm going to quickly cover a couple opportunities that we have for our BI dashboard and our and-on template uh, add-on. And that will lead into what Matthew's going to uh, show you on his, uh, his product. And uh, Matthew, when you come on uh, in a few minutes, correct me if I've got the wrong name up here, but uh, basically what you have is an asset management system, but now I think you've named it. So uh, let me know if I need to change this uh, when you come on here in a few minutes. So uh, with that, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, many of you know, but some of you might not know, what is IndieSoft Web Studio? Well, it's a very easy to use powerful and affordable HMI SCADA software, but it, it's really so much more than that. When you look at the history of where uh, HMI and SCADA systems have come from and gone to, it's, it's really so much more than just uh, uh, push buttons and pilot lights that they used to be 20 years ago, and, and now they're really doing so many capable things, logging data, predictive analysis, things of that nature. And that's where this word here, this powerful, comes into play. That's a very easy word to say, but a, a difficult word to support. And you look at what what uh, Matthew has developed and, and what's available with IndieSoft Web Studio from a tool set, uh, the word powerful really means a, a so much more. And uh, uh, so going on, you know, if you're not familiar with IndieSoft Web Studio, we can really run on, on lots of different operating systems, uh, the whole Windows family from embedded uh, Windows and um, Compact Edition or Windows CE, Windows Mobile, Windows Desktop, Windows Server Editions, even Linux and VX works. That's where that portability comes into play. Mobility, uh, the different thin clients that we have, being able to run basically remote HMIs on iPads and tablets and phones and Android devices via HTML browsers. And then the interoperability, the ability to really communicate to not only PLCs, but robots, uh, databases, websites, uh, uh, temperature controllers. I even did a project where I worked on an elevator at one time. So lots of unique uh, opportunities. We can be cloud-based. This thing called MQTT is a, um, a protocol that's being widely supported for Internet of Things, as well as OPC UA, things of that nature. Uh, so with all of that comes, you know, basically you're trying to, to increase your productivity, your reliability, and your security in your systems. So having said all that, um, I want to talk a little bit about template versus custom. So if you were to look at uh, a majority of HMI uh, software packages, you're going to start with a custom-generated uh, project, maybe somebody that would do something, a machine builder that would do something for a, a custom-built machine. And then you can work into the idea of templates. Now, these templates that I'm showing here on the screen are predefined templates that make sense for a particular industry or manufacturing or whatever the case may be. And these are already in our PC demo application. Uh, they're typically si uh, single screens with some data behind them, databases. Uh, allowing you to see, for example, this PACML here on the left is specifically for packaging machines, allowing dissimilar brands to, to talk a common language. OEE stands for Overall Equipment Effectiveness. Uh, you know, the, the concept here is, is if your machine is supposed to be, let's say here in the U.S., supposed to run an eight-hour shift, but the machine is only running for six hours, well, what is it doing that other two hours? If you can track that down and, and fix that, either uh, uh, humans uh, or machinery or whatever the case may be, if you can fix that, uh, you can improve your performance, improve your quality, and, and just get better throughput on your, your products. Uh, and on being able to see and, and uh, you know, whether this is displayed on a, a large screen, either next to the machine or up in the rafters in an 80-inch or larger 
uh, matrix of screens. Um, I think the largest that I've personally worked on has been eight 70-inch monitors tied together. That was uh, pretty impressive looking. You could definitely see it from a long way away. Uh, but again, these, these are templates uh, that we have either built into the PC demo or maybe many of you created, created your own or taken advantage of these. Uh, but the concept of what I'm going to talk about is, is really up here at the top. So if, if most of you have taken IndieSoft Web Studio or, or similar HMI product or SCADA product and developed an application, put it on a machine, or put it into service and it, it does its one task and, and, and if something else comes along, you know, maybe you start over or work with what you've learned and, and you know, modify it a little bit, but basically each one is a custom application. And what I just showed you might be the template idea where maybe it's industry specific or you've developed templates for your particular uh, opportunities. And uh, now what I wanna talk about is the idea of creating a project that is deployable uh, on the fly. So the project is maybe um, not fully configured and ready to use when you take it on site, but an administrator uh, on site configures it for the particular layout of the plant, uh, the particular users, the particular products that are there on site, uh, the the uh, faults, for example, quality problems, uh, manpower problems, et cetera, and then deploys it uh, on site. So the it becomes more of a configure the application to fit the needs uh, of its current use. And that's kind of what Matthew is going to show you. I'm going to lead into that with our and on application and our, our business intelligence dashboard. Uh, so again, the, the concept of creating a custom application every time, well, that's great if that's what you want to do, using a template to make it easier and speed that up, or uh, take a look at these concepts that we're going to show you with these uh, customizable uh, templates, if you will, so that you can deploy these uh, rapidly and uh, create assets and things of that nature. So what I'm going to talk about here is our, our BI dashboard add-on. And what that is is it gives you really the ability to, to just in a few simple clicks, uh, take data that's in uh, either a Microsoft Access database or a Microsoft SQL Server uh, database and, and display it in a meaningful way. And the brochure that we have, and it's on, a, on our website, uh, shows you that this can really be done in just a few simple steps. And, and the idea is uh, first you point to the data source, uh, and again, that could be Microsoft Access or uh, Microsoft SQL Server, and then you define what tables you want within that. And, and this data does not have to be something that was previously logged with IndieSoft Web Studio. This could be displayed uh, or, uh, the data from other sources as well. Uh, but basically, you point to your data sources. And then, uh, I don't know if you can see this step five here, but there's these little teeny tiny graphics. Basically, you get to choose, similar to how we have up here on the uh, upper corner, um, is the screen divided into two sections, three section, one section? Is there one big chart? Is there one on the right-hand side and two on the left? Is there one over the top uh, of each other? Uh, however, that screen is segmented. And then in each of those sections, you then get to choose whether it's going to be a pie chart, a Pareto, a line graph, a table. Uh, and, and when you're all done, you can even print these reports to, to PDF files. Um, once you choose the data, and tell it what data type and what colors you want, the data just starts showing up. Uh, so about as long as I've taken to describe it to you uh, is how fast you can get that data to come up. So for those business analysts and the people that are looking to improve performance in a, in a manufacturing facility or some process, uh, this could be a really great tool to allow the people who are just kind of scratching their heads going, how can I look at this data? How can I see this in a better way? Uh, this dashboard can, can give you that insight. This might be something that you would use on your plant floor instead of printing out a bunch of 8.5 by 11 or A4 size sheets of paper and then sticking them on a, on a board for everybody to look at in the morning meeting. Uh, pull this up on a big screen TV, pull this up on a 60 inch, 80 inch uh, screen and uh, actually analyze the data and be able to see it and, and understand and interact, uh, interact with that. So. Uh, that's the, the BI dashboard uh, real quick. Um, before I forget, uh, you can get more information from our website on the BI dashboard 
and any of our add-ons here on the, the IndieSoft website. You can go to uh, Products and Downloads, Add-ons. And I'm going to scroll down here a little bit um, and take a look at the BI dashboard. If you click here to find out more, you can see down here at the bottom, you can actually download the brochure. You can watch the webinar. Uh, there's a quick demo of it. And a question that we had on this morning's uh, webinar is, can I, can I use that uh, BI dashboard as a standalone tool, or does it have to be implemented in an existing project? And the answer is both. You can use it as a standalone tool, or we even provide an engineering manual along with it to show you how to integrate it into an existing application that you might have. Uh, so that opportunity exists for, for either one of those. Uh, also on this page is our uh, information on our import wizards as well as the end on template that I'm going to get ready, ready to cover here uh, as well. So the end on template is a little bit closer to what Matthew is going to be showing you. And I'm, I'm going to explain how this works uh, very simply, uh, very quickly I should say, just more as a, a complement to what uh, Matthew's going to show you as kind of a, a lead in to what he's going to do. Uh, so the idea is basically to alert the right people to production delays so plants uh, can, can really minimize uh, uh, downtime and just, just really uh, make it better understood what's going on. There's a brochure and uh, already a, a webinar that we have up on the website. And um, uh, so I'm going to try to quickly do a demo here before I hand things over to Matthew. So I've already got IndieSoft Web Studio loaded up and this Andon uh, template loaded. I'm going to go ahead and run this. And at first I'm going to log in as an administrator. And this, this might be um, yourself or somebody on your team who would then go on site and deploy this. So this may be something that you have already um, set up in the background as a template. And now if I log on as my administrator, this could be an engineer, however you wanted to set up the security, then I could go on site and deploy this. And the deployment process would be simply to go here into setup. And I would first uh, confirm, do I have my database connections uh, set up in my, my, in my role, the proper role? Uh, then I might set up users. In this case, I've set up my name as, a, as an actual user, which I'll, I'll log off as the administrator here in a minute and log on as a user. But then I might start to define products. So here I have just three example products, a test product, a round product, a straight product, and you might have hundreds of these. Uh, so there's users might define shifts, what time starting shift uh, starts and takes breaks and, and lunches and so forth, and then define the physical locations. Uh, here I've got a, a hypothetical plant in, in Austin, Texas, and what I might be able to then do is segment that plant into maybe two different areas. I'm going to add in the Austin facility, I'm going to add a manufacturing area, And then also within the Austin facility, I'm going to add maybe a, a packaging area. So once the product is produced, it goes over to packaging and gets, it gets packaged up. But here in manufacturing, maybe we've got three different machines. So I'll create machine one. If I could spell, type, and talk all at the same time, that would be beautiful. So there's machine one, and I'll save myself a little bit of time, see if I can't copy that. And then also in the manufacturing area, we're going to create uh, machine two and machine three. And then in the packaging area, maybe we're going to create two machines there. So I leave that highlighted, and maybe there's a uh, label machine and a shrink wrap machine. So we'll go ahead and create those just so you can see how we are building this tree structure here. And you could create this to match the facility that you were deploying this in. It doesn't have to be just like this, but I want to show you that this is very flexible. So now I've created that, that uh, structure for the physical layout. And uh, here we could maybe define uh, the type of Andon issues by name, the type of um, you know, escalation levels, things of that nature. If so-and-so does it, uh, where is that? If so-and-so doesn't uh, uh, work on this fast enough, it gets transferred to the supervisor, then to the 
manager, so on and so forth. So now that I've set up that plant, what I'm going to do is I'm going to log off as the administrator. I'm going to log on as the user, Scott. And once I do this, then I can flip over into the and-on mode of this. Now this has been deployed in a facility. And maybe I can now go and take a look at these different alerts that I have set up. So here, maybe, um, let's see if I've, I've got just a few of these. Let's create an, uh, I've already got one uh, FQC quality uh, type thing. Let's go create a couple more. Let's go create two or three on machine two. So let's say that there's a welding issue. I'm going to report that. You can see how that number increased from one to two. Uh, also on machine two, maybe there was a uh, cover uh, color problem. So now there's an additional error there. And uh, maybe we'll add yet another one, a, a riveting problem. So now we've got four types of errors on there. And uh, then we can go uh, back over here, go to the Andon system and look at the dashboard, and now we can see all those different types of errors that we have. Here's my three different uh, quality. I can then dive down into this and see what types of uh, uh, errors had what types of problems, even drill down into each uh, individual machine as necessary. Uh, I don't remember what I put that on. Uh, let's try this. Uh, so yeah, so very easy to display this and run with this and, and really understand what's going on in a facility based on the different types uh, uh, of areas, machines, of, of users, quality issues, um, you know, material issues, and then you can add your own, own types of, of uh, issues there. So again, very configurable, very complete, uh, ready to deploy type idea. And uh, again, this is uh, more of just a lead in. We do have this uh, available as a template from Indusoft. Uh, but I really think the type of thing that you're going to want to see is what, what Matthew has to offer. So uh, what I'm going to do is hand it over to Matthew. I'm going to remind you that um, we can't hear you on this type of webinar. So if you have questions, uh, put those into the chat panel or the Q&A panel. Uh, there will be questions and answers at the end, but get your questions in early. We'd like to review those and have a, a chance to prepare a response. But uh, with that, Matthew, I'm going to take you off of uh, mute now. All right, well, thank you, Scott. I uh, greatly appreciate the introduction. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, background of EMR, uh, the background of why we, Scott mentioned some of it, why we created this software package, uh, why we chose Indusoft to work with. We'll go through some of the software features, uh, examples of systems, and then we'll do a live demo of the software. Uh, we're actually going to create a, a small SCADA project uh, with about 120 tags in it before the end of this webinar. So something to remember, we're going to actually uh, have a working SCADA project by the end of this presentation. So a little about myself, uh, I'm an electrical engineer from Auburn University here in the United States. Uh, my background for work, I was a field engineer, uh, multiple industrial facilities uh, across the U.S. and globally, and became a project engineer where I did a lot of water wastewater, uh, plant process engineering, SCADA, uh, systems, and then finally now working for a manufacturer's rep organization. EMR Associates uh, has been around since 1979. Our focus is power systems, uh, medium voltage, pad-mounted transformers, switchgear, automation and control systems where we're really working with system integrators and machine builders on gate and control systems, and then the critical power market. Uh, we represent uh, Mitsubishi for uh, UPSs at uh, large data centers. Uh, pardon the uh, noise behind me here. It looks like at my hotel they decided to cut grass during uh, the presentation. So uh, some of the lines we represent, Indusoft is one of the lines, uh, Rital Enclosures, Eden Cooper Power for Transformers, Grace Engineering, Socomec, and multiple others. So we're in industrial plants. Uh, we're in industrial facilities. We work a lot with OEMs and system integrators to try to bring them some of the best products uh, on the market today. So the start to this, SCADA. Uh, everybody hopefully knows it uh, stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. Well, what we've found throughout the years of selling SCADA systems and integrating them is usually you've got a sales engineer or sales guy that goes out and actually talks to the customer about the system. So they come up with some type of a design. 
uh, maybe based on previous designs, as Scott mentioned, so they have something to start with. But a lot of times it's really a conceptual idea from the customer and the sales engineer of what they actually want to get and how they want the system to work. So once they have that developed, they bring it back for project engineers to begin working. And once again, they can copy and paste or use previous designs, or in a lot of cases, they start basically from scratch because it's so different than the last system they put in. This takes quite some time, a lot of work on databases, a lot of work on alarming, adding trends, adding whatever other features the customer might want. And then finally, a field engineer goes out and actually installs the system. And what we found is normally that gets changed in the field. Uh, the customer didn't get exactly what he was expecting. Um, so there's changes happening on site. And you end up with something like this. So you get multiple types of systems. They operate differently. And they become very customized to that specific industry. And additions are difficult, to say the least. So if you want to make a change to your system, if you want to add the monitoring of a new asset or database that asset or add alarms for that asset, that becomes a, another project usually. And hopefully the same engineer is still at the system integrator or at the plant so they know how to make changes. So what we looked at was how do we make that easier for the customer? What's the key things the customer needs in a system, and how can we give them that in, as Scott mentioned, more of a template-based setup? So a lot of our customers, uh, they want to know when something goes wrong. So they want an alarm, but they don't want an alarm just sitting there on a screen blinking at them or even ringing a horn in the facility. They want to get a text message. They want to get an email. They want something that comes to their smartphone and lets them know they need to look at the system and make a change. Trending. Uh, trending gives them the ability to determine some cause and effect action. When this happened, what else was going on in the system? So now they can take their trend database and hopefully fix what caused the alarm. Visualize. They want some type of dashboard feature where they can quickly and efficiently look across all of their assets, all of their facility, and find what might be going wrong, or at least in at a minimum, see what's happening. Logging it uh, with the IT networks we have today and with everyone wanting to get the data for analysis, a big piece of this is getting that into a usable database. Uh, for the software we developed, we're going into Microsoft SQL database. So each one of the assets that we add in this demo, in this webinar, will be logged into the SQL database, and we'll show you how that works. And then lastly, as we mentioned, I put in this $50,000 SCADA system, and I want to add a new machine. How easy is that done? Do I have to bring the integrators back on site? Do I have to relearn the software? Is my plant engineer now moved on, and no one knows how to work on the system? And how do we get to there? Well, we're looking at template-based, as Scott mentioned. We want to do a standardized layout. We want it to look the same whenever we deploy it. We want it to work the same. We want it to be configurable. So instead of going in and trying to figure out how to program using VBScript or program SQL queries or program alarming and text and those types of deals, we want to be able to set it up and have all that ready to go. We have some base assets in the system to allow the design to go quickly. And then the system needs to be able to add some custom assets. And I'll show you what custom assets means shortly. So why Indusoft for this? There's multiple SCADA packages out there on the market. Uh, we basically we wanted to build something that was a template add-on to an existing SCADA package. We didn't want to have to maintain Microsoft certifications, communication drivers, any of those things. So with Indusoft, we had all the drivers available, built into the product, so we didn't have to worry about using a third-party gateway to communicate with most PLCs on the market. Uh, we have the ability to add tags during runtime. That's a big deal if you're thinking about SCADA. If I have to go in and add 100 tags, which we'll show today, to my system, 
that in itself is usually a, a, a chore. And then making those tags trend tags and alarm tags and database tags becomes more, more work. Uh, communication drivers during runtime. In some SCADA packages, you actually have to compile the system once you add tags or add communication drivers. Inside of Indusoft, you'll see today we can do that during runtime. The database efficiency. Um, a lot of packages, to get the historian, you've got to buy a separate license to log to a SQL database efficiently. Uh, with Indusoft, you can connect right up to those SQL databases. Uh, we've got very cost-effective runtime licensing. And then our relationship, uh, since we represent Indusoft, allowed us to get uh, with the engineering and management team and discuss what we were wanting to do and what the best way to do that was. So a little bit about our development time, timeline for the project. In 2016, we began creating a software specification that went through a lot of these ideas and trying to figure out a way for the customer to make it easy to start monitoring their assets. Uh, we worked with the consulting services team headed by Paolo Guerra. Um, it was great to work with Paolo. We went back and forth and developed a good software spec um, and timeline. And then in January of this year, uh, the system began being programmed by Vinicius Chacon down in Brazil. And through multiple webinars, uh, working with Vinicius, we were able to get the project completed and beta testing over in the middle of May. So the software is actually sold under a company called Control Boss, and we're naming it Argos Software. Um, really looking at a, a product that allows you to bring all the data to one place, monitor your assets. Uh, as I said, beta testing completed in May, and we sold our first system at the end of May. So what does that look like? So we wanted to, based on a standard SCADA package, right? So Indusoft now has over 300,000 installs. So we know they're not going anywhere, and we know they're going to stay current with Windows and Microsoft and the IoT of things. Uh, system works in runtime, so little or no development, as we'll show. Logs to a SQL database, so everything we're going to put into the software package will have a table inside of SQL that we're sending the data to. Ability to see the trends and configure trend groups. I'll show you this functionality. It's uh, quite nice to be able to have a trend logged and stored so you can go back and look at amps versus current or temperature versus amps in the system. Configurable alarms that can be sent out over email, and then the visualization, the dashboard feature. And really what we've done is we've tried to take that traditional SCADA, the development, the graphics, the mock-ups, the what-ifs, Everything that goes into that that is a potential for failure or at a minimum a potential to spend more time and effort than originally thought in the, in the project and condense that down in the Argo software. So what does that look like? Default assets. So as anyone knows, we want to know if something is on and off. So this allows you to go out into the field, monitor pump running, open, close on valves, machinery, whatever is a digital input that can be talked and communicated with over a standard communication bus, a digital output. So there's assets in the field we want to control. We want to turn things on and off. We want to start a cycle, open or close valves, whatever might be out there, now you have control of it. Analog inputs. So once again, we can talk to any PLC out there, and we're going to bring that in and allow you to scale the value coming in, set up high and low alarms on that value, and then get that value in the SQL. So now I can say, hey, I want to monitor my HVAC system. I've got one BATnet tag, and I just want to know what the current HVAC temperature is. We can pull that into the system. Same system we're running in an industrial facility. And then an analog output which will allow us to go out and take control of the assets. So now I want to change my speed, change my temperature set point, 
change the counts, change the totals in the systems. And then, as we all know as engineers, having standards never works. Someone always wants something that's a custom. So we've got the ability inside the software to create custom assets. Now, these custom assets fall very similar to what the base assets are, DI, DO, AI, AO, but now take that to another level where we can have multiple tags, multiple features on one screen and reuse that over and over inside the project. And part of our hope is working with some of the Indusoft certified system integrators and distributors, we'll be able to create a database of assets on the market. You'll see today we've got some created already, but some of the thoughts are different power monitors. So you've got a custom asset for a, a GE power meter or a Sokomec power meter, uh, different VFDs. So for a WEG VFD or a soft starter, a custom asset could be a duplex pump station. As long as you create your hardware and your code on the PLC so that you can replicate it, you can really have as many assets as you want and drop those onto the screen to build out a system. So here's a layout of a brewery. And just quick thoughts on this, we could have a bottle of running, control of the doors, the overhead doors, water usage, bottling speed, kettle temperatures, and then power usage for the facility. So these are all done with just base assets, default assets, inputs and outputs. But now all of these inputs and outputs, because of the way the system is designed, are logging, trending, and alarming. So you will get text messages or emails if your water usage goes high or if your bottler is not running. And you get the online screen here, which is our dashboard view of the system. So in the webinar, as I mentioned, we're going to actually create a uh, SCADA project here. Live, we've got a manufacturing facility. In the manufacturing facility, we're going to tie into the HVAC system using BACnet protocol. We're going to tie into a machine using Ethernet IP protocol, another machine using Modbus, some remote I.O., uh, protection relay, and then inside of the switch gear in the facility, in the lower right, we're going to do hot spot monitoring, so temperature monitoring of the gear with a great sense, and power monitoring of the gear with a Sokomec meter. And what does that look like? So here's our layout. Our IP addresses, the protocols they're talking, and how they're networked back to the Argo software. So now I'm going to get out of the Get out of the Maxis decided to stop working. Get out of the uh, PowerPoint, and we'll go into the Indusoft application. So as Scott showed, this is Indusoft. We're going to go into runtime. We're going to run it up on the PC. This is the general layout. You've got an online screen, which gives you an asset name some values of the asset, is it communicating, is it an alarm status, your online screen, which shows you your dashboard displays, trending capabilities, alarming, and then our setup. So if we just started this system, as it is, blank, we'd come here to general, we'd install an access engine, which allows us to read from Excel sheets, which I'll show you in a minute why that's important. Set up our SQL connection. In this one, we're connecting to the local SQL Express on my PC. Give it a database name. This can be a unique name. Integrated security, and then we would recreate our database. Once the database is created, in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see the database symbol go green, that we're now talking and working with that database. Our alarm categories. In the categories, we have Main, uh, warning, maintenance, and critical. They can be named whatever you want. And then we've got email lists. So in this list here, you actually come in and you're able to put 
your email address, a string of email addresses if needed, separated by a semicolon, and get an email on any of the alarms that we configure in those categories. Under remote notification, we'd actually come in here now and set up our email settings. We can do either an SMTP or a POP server. Put it all together and send a test email to make sure your system's working. Asset definitions. Here's where we actually show the default assets, our analog input, output, digital in, digital out. An example of a custom asset, uh, the GE850 is a protection relay, great hotspot monitor, um, the temperature monitoring for switch gear. I-35 is a Socomex power meter. Uh, as Scott discussed, we have a uh, OEE asset that's in development right now by one of our partners, Automation NTH. They're an uh, Indusoft certified system integrator. So they're developing this. We'll show how it's going to look and how it's going to work. And then this uh, Wago is remote I.O. inside of the facility. What we found is while this does really good to talk to PLCs and smart equipment, if the customer doesn't have a PLC or smart equipment and still wants to monitor his asset, say it's a large compressor that is hardwired or hardwired controls with simple push buttons and switches, uh, the ability to slap a remote I.O. brick in that panel now allows him to start communicating to that system. Uh, we have the ability to import and delete assets. So in the system, we can bring in new custom assets. Or if we've got a system where we don't want to show the customer or give the customer access to different assets, we can change them up. So asset configuration, kind of where the, uh, where the magic happens. So here we're going to start adding our system. I put this together, this simple spreadsheet. This is the asset name, the communication type, the PLC address, the register we want to monitor, and then the actual asset type. So you'll see we have a couple analog inputs. We've got some custom assets, uh, digital outputs, and finally an OEE. So we're going to get started with this airflow over BACnet. So I come here, copy and paste work. It's an analog input. And then I'm going to select my communication driver. So we're giving you access to all the communication drivers that are inside of Indusoft. So I'm going to scroll down, select the BACnet over IP protocol. I'm going to give it an IP address. I'm going to confirm that's the right IP address. Yes. Add that to the system. Now I've got this in my system ready to be added to the database. But first, I've got to actually put in the tag name of what we want to, what we want to monitor. So in this particular case, the BACnet is a analog input. It's the first analog input on this BACnet device. And the present value, we could set a high and a low alarm here. So if we wanted to set a low alarm, we would come in and say airflow low. Then whatever we want, give it a limit. Save our configuration on that, and then recreate the application. Now, what's going on behind the scenes is we've got custom code inside of the Indusoft using, uh, say, custom code, but it's using all the standard blocks and scripting inside of Indusoft to create the graphics, the database, and the alarming. So now I see I'm not communicating with this. Well. One thing I did wrong is I typed in 90 instead of 190 on the IP address. So we go back to our asset configuration, come here, make it the proper IP address, save those changes, recreate the application, and Was actually 
actually unplugged also, so once it comes back up, we will see this uh, go live again. So that's our that's our airflow. So now we're going to add our second tag, temperature. Analog input. Back net. Change our address. Recreate our application. And now we've added both of these to the system. And as you can see, we're actually communicating now because I had the a, a, uh, Ethernet cable unplugged to the BACnet device. So now we'll continue building our SCADA project. The next we want to add is one of the custom assets. So in my drop down, I'm going to select the Grace Hotspot Monitor. It communicates over Modbus TCP, we know that. And then my station address, using the same Modbus layout that we'd use in Indusoft, our IP address, our port, and then our unit ID. And then we recreate the application. Now this, we don't have to go in and do anything with our tags. Our tags are already set up in the custom asset. So if I look at the custom asset, I've got my parameters, which are my tag names, my scaling already accomplished, and all of my addresses already mapped in the system. So that when I go to the device, I got live data here. I'm monitoring three temperature feeds. These are not connected on the hotspot monitor. But, and see, I get my alarm on my airflow. So if I click on my alarm and come to the alarm page, there's my low warning that we put in for the airflow. So it's already working. I come here and now I want to add my remote I.O. in. It's another custom asset. So I scroll down to my Wago remote I.O. Put in my IP address, recreate, and now I'm communicating to my Wago Remote IO. And if I so desired, I could come here, turn digital outputs on or off, change my analog values, whatever I might want to do to that Remote IO brick. Power meter. So these items will be typical in any industrial facility a customer is asking for these days. They want to monitor power. They want to monitor machine efficiency, hot spots. We're going to pick the I-35 power template. And you can see here we're at unit ID 2, because this is going through a gateway, a Modbus gateway. Recreate the application. And we'll go behind here and look at the power meter also. So it's set up with everything we want to monitor from that power meter. The scaling's done, the units are done, and then all of the addresses. And you can see we've got about 30 tags that we just added to this system for that power meter. And we're, we've got voltage right now. It's on a single phase system. And I've got it tied to a light switch, so when I turn it on, you'll see we get some current coming also. And what's unique about this is instead of a pop-up, as we showed here with the remote I.O., we've actually got a faceplate behind it. So the faceplate now allows us to set and do a lot more visualization and control if needed of that asset. So I can now go in and add 50 power meters by just knowing the IP address of those power meters. We're going to do a quick my Ethernet IP. So analog input, it counts. It's an ABTCP. 
I mean ABC IP driver for Ethernet IP protocol. And this particular PLC is a 1400 MicroLogic, so we know how to address it. And we have counts. And then here in the background, we're going to do our C5 colon 0 dot ACC. So that's our counter five variable, the accumulated value for it. Recreate application. And now we've got our counter. And let's move ahead pretty quick, see if we get time. We're going to do a count up. That's going to be a digital output. It's a B3. You know you're Alan Bradley. I've got feedback for the digital output. Recreate our application. And now we've got a count up. So when I hit count up, I'm actually sending a signal to the PLC, and my counter is increasing as I do that. And then finally, we're going to show the OEE here. We can have some time for questions if need be. We've got a modeling machine. We're going to select our OEE template. Recreate our application. And in our OEE, the, the things we need to know out of the machine are the auto mode, good units, bad units. Um, those are the actual things that are communicating from the machine. And then from that, we would have our availability, our performance, our quality, um, and then give us a target OEE. And behind it, this is a mock-up right now. The, the custom asset's not developed. But you would be able to go in and get more details on that particular machine. And then protection relay. We'll select our GE850. Recreate the application. And now, if we were communicating live to the system, we would have that protection relay set up. And once again, it has a face plate also very similar to the power meter. Now in our trending system, we go behind the scenes here and we can see that we have all the assets we just created to select from. So if I wanted to monitor channel one's temperature versus current on A phase, I can do that, and I can also save that as a profile. And now when I want to see that, I could actually come back and load that profile through my system. Alarming, we've got the ability for the history of the alarms. So here's some from our demo earlier today. And then to select by alarm type. So I could come in and just pick the asset that I want to know about. So if I had 50 power meters and I picked the asset template of the I-35 power meter, all my power meter alarms would show up in the screen. These are also logged to the SQL database so that we can run reports on it and the IT department in our facilities can get into this and do data mining. I'm going to pull up the SQL Express on my laptop. While that's going on, here's the background. So it is Indusoft in the background. Here's 
my database. And if we look under demo two, this is the one we created today. Here are the tables of every asset we created. So everything we put in the system today is already in SQL, logging. If I look at the top thousand rows of the hotspot, we see across the columns, here's all the temperatures for each channel. And you can see there's some of our values for those temperatures. So each one of the assets has its own trend table in the database. And then here's our alarm history inside of the database. And here's the screen for OEE. So if I move this in the development environment and saved it and went back into my runtime, you'll see it's now moved. So it is still based completely on standard Indusoft, which will allow you to make changes to the system, add additions to the system. Uh, Scott mentioned the business intelligence dashboard. That's one of the add-ons we want to have on it in the next uh, six months so that not only do you get your data and monitor and alarm and trend, but now you can also come to the same system and run reports on your data. And then here's the assets we added. The protection relay is not communicating. And if you look behind these, you'll see the communications to the PLC. and those act tag values. All right, so in a little longer than 15 minutes, I think we've done about 100 plus tags, alarming, trending, logging, and visualizing. Scott, that's, uh, that's your cue. <laughs> Matthew, can you hear me? Yep, we got you. All right. I had two different layers of, of my headset was muted, the WebEx was muted, I couldn't, I couldn't talk. So uh, excellent job. Um, for those of you uh, uh, who are still watching, look, look on your screen. You're going to see contact information for Matthew, how to get a hold of him. He'll, uh, uh, if they need to get a hold of you, this is how. What else, what else would you have them contact them for, uh, you for, Matthew? So if you go to the uh, controlboss.com webpage, We've got a contact form out there on that, but we've also got documentation. We've got the user manual, how to license the product, uh, how to talk to an Alan Bradley PLC, and then also we've got some nice videos that show you almost exactly what we went through today, how to add assets, how to lay out a system. Um, those are all here on controlboss.com. And in the brewery example, we actually go through and add all those assets that we showed you earlier. Great. Thank you. So here's my so, contact info. Uh, email me. Or call. Go ahead. I'll send email me at EMR Associates or give me a call. Great. Thanks, uh, Matthew. Really appreciate it. Good job. I, I love seeing that uh, that application that's, that's so encouraging where this stuff can really go, uh, how easy it can be used. Um, I know when I give presentations, the, the uh, demonstrating in five minutes how quick the trend can be done, logged to a database, just people are kind of stunned by that. They didn't realize it could be that easy, and this, this makes a whole application that easy. Um, we have it open for questions uh, right now. Uh, if you have a question, put it into the chat panel or the Q&A panel, and Matthew and I would be happy to, to answer that. Um, right now there's no questions in there. I have a question for you, Matthew. You say you're in a hotel, and then uh, to show the, uh, the current draw, you turned on a light switch in the hotel. You're not trying That's to correct. sell this to the ho hotel management, are you? What's that? <laughs> no, I I guess I uh, I guess I could uh, talk to him about it. Now my power meter actually has a uh, plug, so I can demo how it works. So <laughs> I took the uh, hotel lamps and plugged them into the power meter, so that I can show a uh, some live data coming in. 
So you're the one who reconfigures all the the lamps and the outlets in the in the hotel rooms that I I stay in afterwards. Um, yeah, after right. this trip, it's pretty. Uh, I think uh, the uh, the cleaning lady probably thought I'm building a bomb here with all the uh, <laughs> electronics that are on the desk for this demo. Because <laughs> I have yeah, I, I have all of these things live communicating on the desk. Uh, awesome, great. Thank you for doing that and hauling that ar- around with you for this uh, WebEx. Uh, Matthew, with that, there's there's no additional questions that have come in. Uh, and hopefully, you and I have done our jobs and conveyed this information well. Um, a- again, for those of you who are attending, if you have any questions for for Indusoft, shoot us uh, a- an email at info at indusoft.com. Uh, take a look at the survey when we send that out. Uh, oh, a question just came in, Matthew. Uh, uh, can you control the polling rate to the devices? Uh, the polling rate for the whole system is the same right now. We can control the polling rate for the entire system because we're using the main driver sheets. So if we wanted to do the polling rate on every one of these at a, at a set pace, we could do that, yes. Okay. So you're just using the main driver sheet. The default, the default time yeah. for the main driver sheet, the scan rate is 600 milliseconds, but based on a tag, and yeah. one simple configuration that can be changed to uh, to do. Uh, another yeah, question. Yeah, you're looking at my screen. One of the uh, one of the customers we've talked to, instead of having uh, just a trend control here, so how fast you want to log, we also have how fast you want to poll the system, and, it, and it's used that main that main tag in the uh, Indusoft application for the driver sheet. Great, great, great. A uh, question came in, wants to know if the project file that you use, is, is it shareable? Yeah, the way we're doing the uh, system is we have a license, so you do license it, and you have the ability to create your own custom assets um, with the help files that we have. So you license the template from us, it runs on into soft, and then from there you're able to really create your own assets and build your own projects. Great. So uh, if you have uh, specific questions or want to get a hold of Matthew, um, his contact information was up there. You can also find him on the Indusoft website uh, under MR uh, or, or there you go, EMR uh, yeah. Associates, and uh, there's his contact information. Um, Let's see, there's no other questions. Yeah, what we're looking for, Scott, is we're looking for Indusoft integrators and Indusoft distributors that want to work with us and offer this type of application to their customers. Right. Give them a fast right. track to development of the systems. And then we're looking for assets. We want to build a database on the Control Boss website where we have a database of assets that people can download. Great. Great. So, um, yeah, get a hold of uh, Matthew and uh, definitely uh, uh, let him know if you're interested in, in that as a product and uh, see how you can work with him and, uh, and or if you need to get a hold of Indusoft. You can always reach us at uh, indusoft info at indusoft.com. And uh, Matthew, great, uh, great job on the presentation today. Um, I don't see any more questions coming in. Let me take one more last look here. Uh, nothing there and nothing there. Matthew, thank you again. Thank I you, really Scott. appreciate it. And uh, for all the attendees, thank you for joining. Uh, look for this to be posted online in, in the next couple of days if you need to share it with a colleague or a coworker. And uh, uh, fill out that survey. Let us know how we did today. Let us know if you'd like to co-host a webinar. And uh, Matthew, great job. Really enjoyed this. Enjoyed the morning one. I'd like to see it again. Um, yeah, so uh, we had a question come in. Am I going to be able to see this again? The, the, uh, this will be posted on, the, uh, on our website. Uh, just while I have my screen up here, let me, let me pull on the website here just to show you how to find it, make it easy for everybody. So where we, re- we put these webinars once we've recorded these, I uh, apologize here, clicking on the wrong icons, is uh, you should be able to go within a couple of days. If you go to support video library webinars, we post these in chronological order. So you can see we just had a webinar on uh, version 8.0 service pack two, and uh, we'll put this up here. This will be up in a couple of days. You can also see 
them sorted by categories as well down the down the right hand side here. So that's that's where it'll be in just a couple of days. Um, so with all that, uh, Matthew, once again, thank you for joining us, and we're going to sign off 